Hi, my name is Kenzie Lewis. I'm in Studio Thinking ARU 330. It is November of 2022, and I'm going to be working in multiples. I began my experimentation with stamping with styrofoam spheres. I start by putting tempera paint on my plexiglass ink plate and making test prints on mixed media sketchbook paper. Printmaking has been observed since the beginning of humans and hand prints on cave walls. While today we'll be printing on paper, there is a wide array of materials that printmaking can work on. I start my investigation by cutting the styrofoam spheres in half and testing different amounts of pressure and paint application. I found that more pressure allows for more paint to meet the paper, as well as the texture of the styrofoam creating an interesting pattern and more pressure allows for more of the pattern allows for more of the pattern to show up. I then I then began to experiment with the amount of paint and found I had a preference for a moderate amount of paint with hard pressure. Too much paint and the print loses detail, too little paint and the print disappears. What we want is a happy medium. Some reflecting, what I love about working with styrofoam is that it will create a unique pattern with each different sphere so each student will have different creations. While working with the styrofoam as stamps, it may become messy. Uh, I remain grateful that sinks and hand washing exist. I believe it's okay to make a little mess in the name of experimentation and art making. For my second experimentation, um, I found that the styrofoam has a uniqueness in nature, and but what would remain consistent between students is the actual shape of the sphere. So I began cutting into the materials to create new shapes and applying them randomly just to experiment with compositions and adding multiple colors to create visually interesting images. Here are my results. I found it exciting to add new colors and experiment with shapes. One qualm I had with this material is it has a short shelf life. You can only make so many prints before the foam becomes almost unusable and begins to break apart. This result would vary between how thin the stamp is cut, how much pressure is being applied, and how much paint is being used on the stamp. I do, however, enjoy printing on the mixed media paper as it is easily accessible and a good size for experimentation. Uh, I then switched over to block printing ink. I found the ink, I found the ink to apply much thinner than the paint this meant I had to apply more ink to the stamp in order to get my desired result. I did not find much of a difference between the way the color printed and the black ink printed. What I did notice is that, is that the ink dries with an interesting texture, which could be visually interesting for some students, as well as a time to interact with their art as a sensory experience. An artist I have been looking into for inspiration is Sybil Andrews, a printmaker who had major comp contributions to the art form of printmaking in its first 50 to 60 years of life. What initially interested me in her work was her use of free-flowing shapes to create movement and contribute to the composition. As you can see in this work entitled Sledgehammers, done in 1933, there are these shapes in the background that are reminiscent of triangles. That are being used to create the actual movement of the sledgehammers. I also have the same appreciation that she has for the actual time it takes to make a good print. She's quoted saying, the long, careful printing, which is hard work, several times each block, all takes energy and time. Printmaking is no easy task, and I think she's a good artist to remind students that, to remind students of the time and effort that will go into making their prints. The second artist I was looking into uh, is Stephen Fowler. This is an artist who is actively creating work that I believe would be good for students to look at. Stephen is a printmaker who focuses on printing with rubber stamps. What I love about his philosophies as an artist is his focus on the joy of simplicity. Not everything is an elaborate design. It's to keep it simple and to enjoy the process. The third artist, Swoon, um, the third artist I looked into named Swoon uh, is another incredible artist. What I love about this artist is her use of accessible recycled materials and the organicness of her printmaking. While she is working with the human figure, we get to see all the beautiful mark making that she achieves by carving into the, into the linoleum. This brings me to part two of my print, printmaking exploration. 
where I will begin to print with found objects. I went around Sheridan Arts Building finding anything that appeared to be discarded as well as taking materials from our free art supply bin from our free art supply bin and using objects I already happened to own. Sticking with the book, I began my experiments using paint. What I most enjoyed about this process was the different ways I could turn the object to create shapes and patterns. It was interesting to see how the paint would wear between each stamp. What I love about this is the consistent inconsistency. While you're getting the same shapes and can create similar patterns, every print is a little different because with each time you apply the ink, it meets the object a little differently and changes the way it is applied to the paper. I then tried using the block printing ink. The ink goes on much smoother and creates much more simplified prints, much like the, ob much like the artist I observed earlier on in this presentation. I find that the paint is better for getting the detail and the texture, especially when overlapping colors. For my final experimentation, I found, for my final experimentation with my found objects, I decided to do a mix of paint and block printing ink. I printed my objects with the tempera paint uh, first as the paint will dry faster than the ink. Once each acrylic print was dried, I went back in with my objects and created an almost outline for each of the color I previously put down. This created multiple prints with tons of line and color. On to printing with rubber blocks, a medium I am personally very familiar with and with my experience have found to be the easiest skill to pick up. Again, because of my past experiment, again, because of my past experience, I chose to use the block printing ink with my next test. It works best with the with transferring onto the paper and sticks well to the rubber to create clean and easy prints. For this process, I'm going to be using my brayer to roll out my ink onto my plexiglass ink plate. I will be using my linoleum cutters of various sizes and shapes. As mentioned previously, I will be carving into the student grade rubber blocks. For safety, I will remind students that they should always carve with a non-slip mat underneath their block. They should carve away from themselves and have a firm grip on the block and make sure their supporting hand is always out of the way of their tool, as demonstrated in this presentation. I started this experimentation by just getting used to the tools and practicing my line weight. <laughs> the thing about this material is once you make a mark with your tool, it's nearly impossible to go back. So I want to put some practice in to make sure I can get my desired results. I then went ahead and did a print test with my rubber block and was very satisfied with my results. I moved on to now creating images on my blocks with pencil. In order to make lino prints, you have to be able to flex some of your drawing abilities. However, you do not have to make a readable image. For my first test prints, I focus on lines and shapes. While carving, it is important to go deep enough into while carving, it is important to go deep enough into the block to not have chatter which is just any extra black lines that are not meant to be there, and not too deep that you carve through the block. This process of printmaking does require some planning and envisioning. While I was drawing on my block, I was thinking about things like composition, pattern, and how would the block line up if I were to do multiple prints on one page. Here are some of my initial prints. I then kept exploring and going into subject matter I am interested in, as well as adding some more color beyond the black. This has by far been my favorite process. This is a process that you really have to slow down and be very intentional with your mark making, because once you carve something out, you cannot go back. For my third experimentation, I did collagraph prints. I first did a smooth collagraph print with any materials I had lying around. It was not the smoothest of transfers at first, but you get the idea. I then moved on to my textured collagraph print and found I had much more fun with the results. The resulting print had so much energy and lift. The resulting print has so much energy and life to it and changed slightly with every print, making each print unique in its own right. I decided to do my final collagraph prints with hot glue and other smooth found objects as I enjoyed the process of doing the smooth over the textured more. What I liked about the hot glue is that it does not 
apply completely evenly and you are able to layer it up after it dries. I really enjoyed making these simple prints. It's always fun to find something you can do on the go and Collagraph prints can really just be an accumulation of things you pick up anywhere. Thank you so much for watching my presentation.